Hey guys, Julian Lello here, Melbourne-based photographer, and in this video, I wanna share with you some first impressions using the new software from Evoto to retouch some of my portrait images. Now, full disclosure, this is my second attempt at filming this video. Yesterday, I filmed a full photo shoot edit from import to export using Avoto, but after 35 minutes of filming, I figured that it wasn't the most compelling viewing watching me stumble around the software for the very first time. So now that I've had a chance to play with it, in this video, I'm just gonna share with you a little bit about the software itself. I'm gonna take you through some of the key features and how I think they can fit into my personal workflow and then give you my overall opinion on the software itself. So getting straight into it, Let's start on the software itself. The Evoto software is downloadable from the Evoto website, evoto.ai. Now, unlike a lot of the other editing suites you may be used to, there's no charge to download Evoto, nor is there any monthly licensing fee. Evoto works on credits. Essentially, one credit is used to export one image. Now, credits can be bought from the website. Obviously, the more credits you buy, the cheaper they become. But on average, you're looking at about six cents per credit. Now, as we get further through the video, you'll start to see where the value lies in having this credit system and it costing just six cents per export. Now, on the topic of credits, Avoto has given my viewers 30 free credits to trial out the software. So by the end of this video, if you are interested in trying it out, make sure you use the affiliate link in my description. Now, while still on the topic of the software itself, the first thing that caught my eye is the fact that the Avoto software allows me to condense my workflow from two programs down to one. Essentially, when I edit a portrait or fashion shoot, I start in Lightroom, I get my basic edit down, and then I move the images to Photoshop to do any retouching that's required. Avoto allows you to do that all in the one program. As you can see by clicking the little paint palette in the top right hand corner, it presents you with all the sliders that you would normally see in Lightroom. So from your basic adjustments to your curves to your HSL, all in the same format that you're probably really used to. This is where you can do your base edit and get your color grade right. In addition to this, there's also a bunch of built-in filters. These work in exactly the same way as presets. There's a heap to choose from and each one is assigned a slider so that if you do choose to use one of the built-in filters, you can increase or decrease the intensity in which it's working on your image. Now, before we get stuck into what you're really here to see, and that is the retouching, I wanted to just jump back a step and share with you something that I really loved. And that is how the images are imported. When you import your images, you import by project. You create a project name, drag and drop the images in. And then what's really cool is when you click on your home page, it shows you all the projects that you've started. They're all filed really nicely with name and thumbnail. For me, I just thought that was a really nice way to have all your projects or your image files laid out. Okay, so let's move on to the retouching. Now the retouching is where the power of AI or artificial intelligence really shines. All the retouching is controlled by sliders. And it's the AI that analyzes the images and selects the area of the image in which each slider controls. That means no more clone tool, brush tool, or masking. The retouching sliders are broken down by section and clearly labeled as to what they control. You just adjust the slider to your style. So one of the ways in which you can retouch your images is by running through all the retouching sliders that sit down the right-hand side of your screen. Alternatively, there are built-in retouching presets that offer a really good base for you to start from. Now, having spent a little bit of time in the program yesterday, and as I mentioned, editing a photo shoot from start to finish, I found a preset that's called High End that is really close to my retouching style and a really good base for me to start from. As you can see, by clicking the preset, all of the sliders on the right-hand side have moved accordingly. So now I can go through them all and tweak them just to get them a little bit closer to how I would usually retouch my images. Some of the more notable sliders that I wanted 
to highlight in this video are the face and acne slider, which you can see is responsible for removing blemishes. While I might add, still maintaining really great detail in the skin. Often you see with retouching, once you start removing blemishes, smoothing skin out, dodging and burning, you can often lose some of those fine details like pores and fine hairs that are on the skin. The next sliders that I wanted to touch on are the skin and skin temperature sliders. To me, these are game changing when it comes to trying to balance the desired skin tone with the overall edit or look that you're trying to achieve with your image. Achieving this balance has been something that has plagued me for a really long time. And finally, the makeup sliders. Although there is a dedicated dodge and burn slider, I've found that adjusting the highlights and contours are exactly in line with the areas which I would normally dodge and burn on a model's face. Having a slider that adjusts the lips is also much like the skin and skin temperature slider that I've mentioned previously. I find that in Lightroom, sometimes if I'm trying to balance the saturation of reds in an image, it can mess with the lip color. And then it takes me more time to go in later in Photoshop, mask out the lips and bring up the saturation individually. If you're someone that likes to heavily reshape your model's face or body when retouching, there are a heap of capabilities here too. This isn't something that I do a lot of with my retouching. So I'm gonna leave this section of the software for you to play around with and deep dive into. Some of the other capabilities of the software that I personally don't use very often, but I feel are really notable mentions are one, the ability to clean up a backdrop, which I'm sure is the bane of existence for many studio photographers. And also the ability to change a backdrop color or even cut out your subject, giving it a transparent background in just one click. Moving on to the last point I wanted to make and one that really shows where we're headed with the power of AI is the ability to create a preset and or sync your edits. You'll all be familiar with creating a preset or using the sync function in Lightroom to batch edit your images. However, Avoto gives you the opportunity to add your retouching edits to this preset or sync. It's the AI that then reads all your other images, works out where the subject is or subjects are in that image and adds the retouch to the image as well as your basic color adjustments. To me, this is a game changer for any shoot that has a high number of deliverables and requires retouching. The amount of time that this can save is invaluable. So I hope this has given you a better understanding of retouching using AI technology. And if it's something that you think you could fit into your workflow. For me personally, as someone who doesn't outsource my retouching, the amount of time spent in post-production can sometimes limit the amount of fashion work that I actually take on. So given what we just saw in this video, the ability to sync and create presets is gonna really change my workflow and my overall output capacity. And at just six cents an image, it's kind of a no brainer. I'd love to know your thoughts on what you saw in this video and where you think the future of AI technology is headed. If you did enjoy this video, help me out with a like and subscribe. And as always, thank you for pressing play.